pull my email up, and there's a letter. And it's uh, from our pastor at home church. Bishop. I don't know how to tell you this. And then he just goes on. And you've got to understand, uh, he, he is a straight arrow. You know what a straight arrow is? I mean, if they say three words in an email, they've said a lot. I mean, they just, you know, just... He writes this big old long letter, and he basically repeats himself over and over and over and over. What it was, he was so nervous about telling me. But he said, I just feel like you and, Bish- you and Sister Ellis need to come home. And I don't know why. And I thought, hmm, this is interesting. Timing sure is interesting because I'm literally getting ready to send a letter that day. I pick up the phone, I call him, and I kind of rebuke him a little bit. I say, look, man. I trust you. I know, I know I'm your spiritual dad. Prayed you through, baptized you, mentored you, trained you. I understand all that. But you're a man of God. You're a pastor in this church. You feel something, tell me. Don't, don't. Well, I just, how was I going to tell you? I mean, you know, how, I, you know, and he's, I, I understand. I appreciate it. I understand it. I understand it. Thank you. Let's just make this matter of prayer. And, and one of our other pastors, he, he had, while, uh, while Pastor Sean had been praying about this for, for I guess, a couple weeks, he said, and one of the other pastors came in and said, I, I don't know what's going on, but I just feel like Bishop's supposed to come home. Okay? So, I'm not going to ignore these. These are men of God. They're not looking out for their, you know, it's not about them. They're, 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 inter- they're, they're interested in, in what's God doing in all this. So, so, what do I do? How do I handle that? You know what I did? I picked up the phone and I called a man of God that I knew God has placed in my life as a spiritual voice. No question. He doesn't lord over me. He loves me. Picked the phone up. And uh, dialed his number. He answered the phone. And he said, uh, Hey, Brother Ellis. I said, uh, Listen, Brother Strange, I, I, I need to talk to you about something. He said, uh, No. He said, I have something to tell you. The Lord told me you were going to call. He said, uh, you're to come home, you understand? And he doesn't know anything. He, he, he did not know anything about the letter that I had just received. Here's what he says. Now, I'm 50 plus years old, right? He said, Brother Ellis, I'm not suggesting you come home. I'm telling you that if you don't come home, you will be totally out of the will of God. You know what my response was to him? Two words. Yes, sir. I didn't agree. I didn't like it. It seemed to go against everything I thought God was doing in my life at that time. And it brought even for a season confusion. But how can you get confused over the mouth of two or three witnesses? And he simply said, come home. And then he said some other things and he said some things about what the future? He said, where are you going from here? Well, I'm going, and you know, he said, well, you go there, and then you come straight home. I came home. I'm ticked off. Not ticked off, ticked off. I'm just ticked off. You know? I didn't like what God was doing at that time. I didn't understand. But now, six years later, hindsight's always 2020. Now I clearly understand the Why? And it would have been disaster had I done what I was going to do when I did it. It would have affected not just me personally, 
and, and future ministry, but it would have probably affected our church at home. It, no telling who it would have affected. It may have affected this work here, because I doubt if I'd be here. And I don't know why, but God's put me here right? for some reason to, to be some help. Okay, just, just a God thing. You, you understand? See, and, and this is what I'm saying. If, if I didn't understand the importance of spiritual governance, and if I'm simply going to go by protocol and procedure of a system that's man-made, You know what I would have done? I'd have called up somebody because he was voted into an office. He was elected. Must be God. And you know what I got? Wrong advice, more than likely. Not because that's, they were bad or that's a bad, everything's bad about that. But you see, you don't elect spiritual authority. Only God can give you that. Only God can take somebody and put a person in that person's life, and that person knows it. There's two voices I've taught for years now, and I teach all of the young men that we train. Two voices you don't ever ignore. I mean, if they even suggest it in a cough, you don't ignore the cough. You never ignore their suggestion. You never ignore anything they're, they're even hinting toward. One is the voice of God. Never ignore the voice of God. And never ignore the voice of authority that God places in your life. And it's not about how you agree, disagree, or otherwise. It's about walking in submission because God loves us enough to look out for our lives He'll never be able to do that if we're not willing to submit to his governance. I just, I, I just trust God. And because I trust God, I trust the men that God places in my life. I just trust that. As I've said before, God knows how to talk. That's never been a problem. The problem is we don't know how to listen. You know, it's so dangerous when people are just lone guns out there. Just, just, they, they, they think they're their, they're their own answer. They're their own, you know, don't have anybody to check to. I don't care. I don't care how old you ever become. I don't care how spiritual think you are. I don't care what title or role people start crowning you with and, and elevating you at. I want to tell you, you are never above having somebody in your life that can look you eyeball to eyeball and say, Thus saith the Lord. Do you know how or why I could trust that man? Even, even without the two or three witnesses. You know why I could trust him? Because I know he loves me. He's not doing anything out of personal agenda. He got no personal agenda. There was, there was nothing that was going to profit him either way by us doing what we were going to do. He was simply looking out for us. And he loved me enough to tell me the truth. The government of God, the theocracy of God, the kingdom of God is not governed by a spirit of lust and control by men and women who have their own agendas. The motivation is the love of God. It's the agape. It's that level of, of love that only comes from God. And I willingly submit myself to that. I willingly go through whatever training special forces requires. I willingly walk through the disciplines. Why? Because I'm being forced to do it. 